Sometimes listening to Senator Graham is like, it reminds me of playing Monopoly with my son. You change the rules, he changes the rules every time he gets. You know, Senator, you said, use my words against me. I want you to use my words against me. If there's a Republican president in 2016 and a vacancy occurs in the last year of the first term, you can say, Lindsey Graham said, let's let the next president, who it, whoever it might be, make that nomination. You know, my grandfather always taught me, he said, Jamie, a man is only as good as his word. Well, Senator, how good is your word when you made a promise to the American people? And even more, you made a promise to the folks in South Carolina that you wouldn't be doing what you're doing right now. And, and that's the problem that I have. The greatest, uh, I think the greatest heresy that you could do as a public servant is to betray the trust of the people that you are, uh, you took an oath to serve. And that's what you've done. Now, just be a man of it and stand up and say, you know what, I changed my mind, I'm gonna do something else. But don't go back and blame it on somebody else for something, a flip-flop that you're making yourself. My uh, grand aunt Gladys passed away this July in a nursing home by herself. That is the story that so many Americans are experiencing right now. And part of why we're experiencing, no, we're not gonna blame the president. We shouldn't blame the president. We shouldn't blame anybody for the, the inception of this disease. But where blame should come is how we handle this disease. Whether or not we take it seriously. You know, tonight I am taking it seriously. That's why I put this uh, plexiglass up because, you know, it's not just about me. It's about the people in my life that I have to take care of as well. My two boys, my wife, my grandmother. South Carolina is now one of 12 states that still have refused to expand Medicaid. And they haven't done it because we can't pay for it. The government, uh, the federal government was gonna pay for the first five years of this thing 100%, and then the state had to pick up 10% after that. It, it is because it was tied to uh, uh, Barack Obama. Let me tell you something. Part of the reason why we have had four rural hospitals to close in South Carolina over a few years and if you live in one of those communities and you have diabetes or complications uh, with your pregnancy and all, and now it takes you instead of 10 minutes to go to hospital, 50 minutes to go to hospital, that is a death sentence. We need a senator who understands, put politics aside and put the people first. I'm still paying off it 20 years after graduating from college. My wife and I are still paying off our student loan debt. And that's a burden for so many young folks. Mr. Harrison, pay off your student loans so somebody else can go to school. You are worried about everybody else's paycheck other than your own. When you said over our dead bodies will we allow an extension of the unemployment benefits for folks who are desperate right now just to make ends meet? What about the fact that you have raised your salary three times, Senator? I wish many of us could raise our salaries like that, but you've raised yours three times, and you are worried more about my bills than, than I am. In addition to uh, my household, I have two boys that I have to take care of along with my wife, but I also have a grandmother who's the elderly who I help pay bills. I also have a mom who was foreclosed on her home before and I help her as well. And so I appreciate the, 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 the thoughtfulness that you are so concerned about my Your student loans. Up, but Senator, let Thank me tell you, you I pay them on time. I want you to understand that your grandparents' Democratic Party is no longer around. The people running the Democratic Party today are nuts. The first step in terms of working with the other side is not to call the other side nuts. Uh, you know, this is the thing, Senator Graham, I, I have a six-year-old who I often teach in terms of how to conduct himself. And I said, you know, son, that sometimes people come from different backgrounds and they see the world a little differently, but that doesn't make them bad because of it. You know, even though Democrats and Republicans may take the d different paths, hopefully our destination is the same. How can we make South Carolina a better place for all of us, not just Democrats or Republicans or progressives versus conservatives or, or liberals and whatever other term you want to come up with. We're South Carolinians first. We're Americans first. How are we going to work together?